Uh, good morning or good afternoon. So my name is Rob Clare. I actually work for Manaman, uh, which is based in Massachusetts, although I'm based in Paraguay. But I'm giving this presentation really on behalf of Wida Paraguay and the team there. I'm also a member of the, the board of, of Wida Paraguay and I've been involved with Wida Paraguay and conservation in, in Paraguay actually for 30 years now. This is my 30th year in the, the country. So you may be able to tell from my accent, I'm not originally from Paraguay. Anyway, so I'm going to give you just a, a very brief introduction to yellow-billed cuckoos in Paraguay and, and some of the, the issues that are affecting them. Firstly, uh, just to, to start by saying, really not, not where Paraguay is, but where the, the Gran Chaco Americano, the Chaco is, which is really the, the core of the, the wintering range for, at least as per my understanding, a very significant uh, part of the, the yellow-billed cuckoo population. So it's sort of central um, or just south of center in, in, in South America. It's bordered to the, the north by the, the Cerrado and, and other elements of sort of the, the Amazon basin, uh, to the east by the, the Atlantic forest, to the west by the Andes, and to the south, uh, the Pampas. It's a essentially a sort of a, a scrub forest, a xeric forest formation. Although in the, the eastern part, it's actually pretty pretty humid, and it transitions into the, the Pantanal, the world, world's largest wetland. So there's, there's a lot of palm savannas, but to the as you can see in the, the lower image on the right, but into the to the west, it is a, a xeric scrub forest, very very thorny. Uh, lots of cacti, as you can you see in the, the image on the, the top right. Just for reference, um, let me see if you can see the arrow on the screen. Pepe Jose Luis Cartes and I are based right there. That's Asuncion, Paraguay, right where the, the arrow is. Just to focus in on, on Paraguay and really to, to talk a little bit about the, the, the climate in the Chaco. So the, the uh, Paraguay as a country is essentially divided in two by the Paraguay River. The Chaco is the, the Western uh, part of the, the country to the, to the left on the, on the map. And there's, there's a pretty extreme gradient of both temperature and, and rainfall in the country whereby the, the westernmost parts of the country and of the Chaco are extremely xeric, uh, maybe just 200 millimeters of rainfall per, per year compared to the, the easternmost part, the Atlantic forest, where up to 2,000 millimeters of, of rainfall per year. Um, temperature extremes are, are less uh, in terms of the gradient across the country, but generally it's a it's a subtropical country, but a, a very hot country with uh, significant fluctuations in, in temperature. So in the summer, it can be 50 degrees centigrade. In, in the winter, uh, we get a few frosts and very significant swings in, in temperature. The temperature change can change by 20, 25 degrees uh, C over the, the course of uh, a day if um, a, a cold front or a, a warm front comes comes in. In terms of what we know about yellow-billed cuckoos in, in Paraguay, I thought I'd start first with what there is in the way of eBird data, um, relatively little. This was, this was just this morning, just 146 lists in eBird uh, with yellow-billed cuckoo records. Nonetheless, they, use, they do capture pretty well the, the, the spread of, of, of dates. So yellow-billed cuckoos turn up really from sort of the end of October onwards, uh, particularly numerous from the, the end of November through to more or less now, end, end of February, early March, and then numbers tailor off. Um, there are actually a couple of issues with some of the outside uh, dates shown on that bar chart, which I think are actually due to misreadings of, of dates on, on museum specimens in a, in a couple of cases. But birds do turn up earlier, so we, we can see yellow-billed cuckoos in country from sort of mid-September, early to mid-September onwards, but just a, a very few birds. 
And one of the, the big challenges of trying to interpret presence of, of cuckoos in the country based on, on eBird data is just there are firstly very few observers, and those few observers are, are largely uh, focused in Asuncion or in eastern Paraguay. Um, over 98% of Paraguay's population is in the eastern half of the country, less than 2% in the west in, in the Chaco. And, and very few roads or very few well surfaced roads. So a, a lot of areas are relatively inaccessible and certainly under underwatched. If you're if you're not familiar with um, eBird maps, the, the gray squares are the, the areas which have uh, or the gray or the, the, the purplish squares are uh, those which have observations. The purplish ones having, uh, in this case, records of, of cuckoos and everything in between is, is without data. Nonetheless, there, there are sufficient data at a regional scale for a, a modeling exercise. And the map here is the, the Cornell um, model of, of cuckoo distribution with the, 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 the bluish color in the, the south representing the, the, the wintering range um, or the what's referred to as the, the non-breeding season. Um, it's actually in some ways easier to use wintering because everybody knows what that refers to, even though they're wintering here in the austral summer. Um, but what what did the, the model does capture pretty well is the the impression of, of how cuckoos are actually using um, the, 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 the Chaco and the, the Paraguay and Chaco in, in particular. So um, apologies if the maps are all slightly different <laughs> shapes and sizes, but I was trying to standardize more or less the, the, the size of, of Paraguay as the, 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 the key piece across each map. So the, the yellow or orangey tones show uh, firstly uh, cuckoos moving south in, in November, uh, really coming into the, the Chaco in significant numbers from the, the end of November onwards. And during December and particularly January, really concentrating not only in the Chaco, but in particular in the, the, the Paraguayan Chaco. Sorry, I forgot to mention that the Chaco actually covers southernmost Bolivia pretty much all of, of Western Paraguay and then Northern Argentina and a very tiny section in, in Brazil, right on the, the border with Paraguay in the, the Pantanal zone. Uh, but Paraguay is really sort of the, the heart, the geographic heart, if, if nothing else, of uh, the Chaco and, and cuckoos really seem to be concentrated in that, that heart during the, the month of January at least. And then from mid-February onwards, you start seeing them sort of spreading out again from, from that heart and, and starting to move north. The reason I wanted to, to show that and really put the emphasis on, on birds congregating in the, the Paraguay and Chaco is because what is, is happening in the Chaco in terms of habitat loss and, and degradation. So here, this is a, a map of uh, the whole Chaco uh, biome in, in something called Map Biomas. Uh, the green represents uh, natural habitats. The, the yellow uh, shows areas which have been modified. This is slightly deceptive in terms of its interpretation of, of open areas. So again, towards the, the eastern part of the, the Chaco, it's much more humid. It's a lot more savannas and, and natural grasslands. And they actually do have a very significant human presence, primarily through, through cattle ranching. It just doesn't show up as um, modified or necessarily show up as modified habitat when analyzing satellite imagery. But if we take out the, the, the sort of the non-wooded vegetation, uh, this is what we're, we're, we're left with. The, the map on the, the left shows the, the Chaco in 2000. So again, the green representing you know, more or less natural, intact, wooded habitats. Uh, the yellow is, is modified, where there's been a uh, transformation of, of habitats primarily to, to agriculture. The map on the right shows the, the situation in, in 2019. So a pretty obvious, uh, significant expansion of, of agriculture. And this, um, this sort of large yellow area there is, is pretty much the, the Paraguayan 
Chaco. It's actually coming close to actually showing the, the borders of uh, the country. So just uh, to focus in, again, this is the situation in, in 2000 and then the situation in 2019. A, a very significant expansion of agriculture, very significant deforestation. Uh, Paraguay, unfortunately, is amongst the, the countries in the world with the highest deforestation levels, actually reaching a point where pretty much any species restricted to the the, the, the Chaco is is coming must be coming close to being threatened under the, the IUCN Red List criteria. Um, which one of the, the main triggers there is a 30% loss of, of habitat over three generations or 10 years and, and deforestation rates are, are coming close to that sort of, of level. And then just to, hopefully this will work, just to illustrate this with a, a GIF image. So this is showing uh, deforestation from 2011 through to 2020, the the area which is um, shows as, as deforested in the central Chaco that's been deforested for, for quite a long time. There's um, Mennonite colonies which have been established there from the, the 1930s onwards, but in recent decades there's been a, a very notable expansion outwards. Um, of the, the agricultural areas and, and really it's, it's coming close to just leaving the, the, the few protected areas. So for instance, this, this large block in the north is Defensores del Chaco National Park. And where um, if you go back to 2011, you know, the park, you could only see the easternmost um, border of uh, the, the, the park um, 10 years onwards and now almost all of the the park boundaries have been delimited by agriculture and, and neighboring areas the the these massive uh levels of, of deforestation are, are really significant we suspect they're really significant for cuckoos because of the the rainfall dynamic in the, the dry chaco um, so generally, cuckoo, you know, based on really personal observations, cuckoos are distributed low density uh, throughout the Chaco, both dry and, and humid Chaco, uh, until there are these episodes of, of rainfall in the, the, the Zarek areas, where birds then are, however they manage to do it, they are pulled into to these areas and occur in just, just amazing numbers. You can literally see, you know, flocks of, of cuckoos crossing the road, uh, hundreds of, of birds along, you know, kilometers of, of roads if you're driving a, a, a dirt track. And, you know, if you're not driving, if you're uh, birding in the area, then bushes full of cuckoos, every, every little puddle that, you know, lasts them more than a a few hours can have five or six cuckoos drinking water from it at a, at a time. It's a, it's a pretty amazing sight, but it only occurs just after rainfall when these, these really dry areas go from the sort of image you see on the, the left with just a, a few trees with, with green vegetation to almost overnight a, a, an abundance of, 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 of green vegetation. But the rainfall, again, it, it's a very dry area and rainfall patterns are, are very localized and, and very, at least for us, very unpredictable. Somehow the cuckoos seem to be able to predict it, but uh, from a human perspective, the actual, you know, where the rain happens is, is, is very un, unpredictable from, from year to year. So they really need, one would assume, the, these broad areas of, of habitat so they can tr track the, the rainfall patterns across the, the landscape. And then just looking ahead in terms of, of climate change predictions, uh, the future really does not look uh, good. This is from a, a World Bank um, assessment of climate change risks in, in Paraguay that was published uh, just last year. Uh, under one of the, let's say, the, 
the less optimistic, but perhaps most realistic, unfortunately, scenarios. And essentially, it sees a lot of the country getting hotter and getting even drier. And in particular, the the, the, the dry Chaco. Um, yeah, we're really talking this sort of the, the top left, the, the northwestern corner of the country is really the, the dry Chaco area, which cookies really seem to favor. And you know, not only are we seeing um, higher temperatures, but also you know, these incredibly dry areas becoming even, even drier. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention the, the, the maps on the, the, the left, uh, the, the scenario from around 2040, 2050, maps on the right are more, more extreme and looking further ahead from sort of 2080 onwards. But, but significant concern in terms of looking ahead for the future. But to finish on a positive note, there's a sort of a, a typical view of a yellow-billed cuckoo in the Chaco just after, after rain, somewhat hidden, but, but surrounded by a, a blossoming of, of new life. That's it. Thank you very much. All right, so we do have time for questions. If you would like to ask a question in the chat, feel free to type it in, or you can raise your hand and I can ask you to unmute. And just in case you're not aware where the raise the hand button is, it's under the reaction icon. Perfect. Okay, Shannon, you should be able to ask a question. Actually, I think it was Callie that put her hand up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but really cool talk. <laughs> Actually, I do have a question. Um, do you, I know like we were there a few years ago in Paraguay and we um, met with some folks from um, Lira and um, they were looking to do actual cuckoo surveys but we um I wasn't sure if they ever got to do them like playback surveys are there any yeah. surveys um structured surveys that I'm familiar with no but as I mentioned I'm I'm just a just a, a board member now so I'm not familiar with all of the details and projects if if Jose Luis is on the call, he may be able to answer. There certainly was, um, and it was partly because of the, the observations of um, you know, almost road transects being a, an interesting means to survey cuckoos under appropriate conditions. Uh, there was an attempt to, it was actually through an NMBCA grant uh, you know, to drive around the, the Chaco and conduct. Uh, road transects, and I think all of those transects coincided with a particularly dry spell, and I think maybe one or two cuckoos were seen, and, and that was it, as opposed to, you know, if you do coincide with, with rain, you, you can see potentially hundreds of cuckoos, and I should mention it's also not just uh, yellow builds, but the, the austral migrant species, the dark billed cuckoo, has a similar kind of um, behavior as, as well. All right, Kelly, sorry about that. You can ask your question now. No worries. Um, I was just wondering, and I don't know, Rob, if you know that much about this particular project, but I know Gira was involved in an outreach project that used cuckoos as kind of a, um, a species of concern to raise awareness um, about migratory birds in, in the Chaco region of Paraguay. And I just wondered if you could talk about that work, if you know about it. I, I don't know much about it, but I do know that it, you know, it is a it is a useful um, species because it's a species that people do see. I mean, they even turn up. Um, you know, I live in the the centre of Asuncion, and I've seen two or three over the years just in a you know a tree in front of my office window. So it is a, it is a bird that, that that people have some familiarity with. Um, perhaps in some ways more so than the species I primarily work with, the shorebirds. And, and people, certainly people in the, the dry chaco are familiar with this sort of, you know, phenomenon of, of large numbers of, of cuckoos turning up after, after rain. 
how effective the outreach has been, I, I can't speak to that. There's a question from there's a question from Guy. Any chance that the regenerative agriculture efforts will benefit the yellow bill cuckoo? Um, I would be inclined to say yes, but I don't know the answer. <laughs> I would like to, to think so. I think that's a, that, that, that's a great research question that, you know, there's so much research, but still needs to, to happen to, for us to really, you know, understand what, what really is driving uh, cuckoo movements within the, the chaco and what really are the, the limiting factors. You know, as I, as I mentioned, you can, uh, from November through to this time of the year, you, know, you can go out anywhere in, in the Chaco and um, parts of eastern Paraguay and have a chance of seeing one or two cuckoos. I suspect that you know the real key limiting factor is is tied to these um, these opportunities which you know, enable so many birds to come together and presumably feast on a, a resource, you know, an explosion of, of, of resources after rain. If that can, you know, if that resource is still available in areas with restorative agriculture, again, that's something I think we'd have to research. That question, Guy. Um, from Russ, where do you see the opportunities for conservation investment as a means to retain or restore habitat in the Paraguayan Chaco? So as, as I mentioned in the, the, the talk, there are, you know, the, the Chaco is sort of being reduced to the, the protected areas, um, national parks, and then some, some private reserves. And Uida Paraguay has um, some significant land holdings there as, as, as private reserves. The key, I would imagine, is actually trying to secure some of the, the corridors between the, those areas. So to you know, make sure that there is uh, as much forest connectivity as, as possible. So there's, there's you know, a need for uh, further land purchase for conservation. There's a need for um, best management practices in, um, in agricultural areas. Um, and some of that is just in terms of uh, kind of the, the planning at the landscape level. So you know, in Paraguay, forest corridors, forest reserves do need to be uh, maintained. What all too often happens is the forest reserve is left as a little island in the middle of an, you know, a large agricultural expanse rather than it being planned in such a way that, that the reserve is, you know, all of the forest reserves and different properties are connected up. And, and that corridors are actually connecting those, those blocks of forest. So it's, it's more along those, those lines of working with agriculture to, to implement practices that can maintain forest corridors and, and main, help maintain forest uh, covers. In some of the, the humid chaco areas, you know, the tendency is to clear, entirely clear the, the islands of forest, to clear the, the palm savannas, whereas uh, leaving some of that, that cover is not only going to be beneficial for, for birds such as the cuckoos, but actually is beneficial for um, you know, livestock providing shade, helping to, uh, to protect water resources, and, and given the, the climate prediction, prediction is actually going to make the, the, the habitat more resilient over time as well. Thank you so much. Um, okay, last question is from Bruce. How can folks in the US and the working group in particular help most to support priority conservation or research? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd start by just um, thanking you know, the efforts that have already been, been happening. You know, the fact that we're now talking with the, the, the Western Working Group, I had just assumed that you know, we were only having uh, Eastern birds turning up here in Paraguay, and you know, nobody seemed to be particularly concerned about uh, the status of, of Eastern birds. Although, you know, once again, with everything that's happening with deforestation in the Chaco, 
I think we should be concerned probably about all birds that are using uh, or dependent on the, the Chaco habitats. So just, you know, what's already happened in terms of starting to show some of those uh, connections is, is really valuable and is helping to bring just a different different lens to the, the the need for conservation efforts in the in the Chaco and how it is not just a, a local issue um, and then just further investment in in research so that again we can better understand that connectivity but then you know we really need to understand how birds are moving around in within the Chaco what is the you know, kind of the landscape scale dynamic and then also what's happening at the, the scale of, of local sites and how that may you know, feed into some 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 management options um, Put succinctly, I think you know, more tags on, on more birds would, would really go a long way to helping.